Uh, congratulations, Athena. Uh, Nick Hausman from House of Wrestling. Uh, Fightful put out a report that Trinity Fatu was backstage tonight. Uh, is that somebody that you'd like to see yourself defending that title against uh, in the near future? Absolutely. Uh, Trent is one of my really good friends. We talk on a daily basis, and um, when we both found out that we were in L.A., um, it was really awesome. She's she's one of my very close friends, and she wanted to come out and support. And so, very cool moment. Like, I hope to have a match with her in the future. I never had the opportunity in WWE to have that match, so absolutely. Hi, Athena, Amy Nemedy with WrestleJoy. I wanted to talk about your match with Yuka Sakazaki tonight. Mm -hmm. You guys had an explosive bout. You've got a lot of history between the two. Um, there's a lot of energy from the crowd throughout the entire match. I just wanted to know your thoughts on wrestling Yuka tonight, obviously emerging victorious, and uh, whether you're finished with Yuka, or maybe you might revisit her again in the future. Thank you and congratulations. Um, my match with Yuka was something I didn't think was going to happen. You know, she showed up this past week after my match with Emmy, attacked me from behind. You know, who would do such a thing? It's crazy. <laughs> but, you know, coming in here, I knew that I had a very tough week ahead of me, coming off having the flu, coming in wrestling Emmy, going and having a killer match with her, going into having a match with Yuka tonight. I mean, I felt a lot of pressure coming into that, but a lot of confidence as well, because I knew Yuka just wasn't going to be able to deliver. Hello, uh, I'm John Moore with ProWrestling.net. Uh, first of all, so uh, throughout your career, you've been known as like like a heroic, like superhero to uh, people. Now, we're seeing a little bit more of a aggressive side from you. Mm -hmm. So how is that and what kind of uh, things do you feel you can do now as opposed to what the old Athena would do? You know, it, it's funny you say that because I not, never stop being my hero at the end of the day. Just because I turned up the aggression, just because I'm out here doing what I have to do to keep my ROH Women's Championship, doesn't mean that I'm not my hero. And honestly, like, there's plenty of people out there that look at me and they're like, wow, I wish I could punch my boss in the face. <laughs> wow, I wish I could hit this woman that called me a uh, whatever, you know. I'm, I am defending what I think is best for me, right? I, I've wrestled on the indies for 10 years. I was known as the American Joshi when I was there. Now I'm the fallen goddess, I'm the alpha. I keep telling everyone that they have to step up their game because I'm not letting go of this title anytime soon. So I'm going to continue to be my hero. I'm going to continue to deliver every single time I step out there. And if anyone has a problem with it, I'll knock them flat on their ass, so. If I may champ, uh, that brings me to our uh, Next big show, and of course, right before you came in, I mentioned Ring of Honor has a great history in the state of New York and around New York City, and we're going to be having a huge show, UBS Arena, right on that Queens, Long Island border there, and uh, with the great history Ring of Honor has, and after your great match tonight and the great series of matches you've been having, you've been saying you wanted to be a great fighting champion, you have a great opportunity against somebody you wanted to have a match with, uh, and somebody who picked up a great win of course, just last night on Ring of Honor and was very impressive, Miyu Yamashita. And you will be wrestling Miyu Yamashita in New York and it'll be a great match this Thursday on Ring of Honor TV and you have a chance to continue being a great fighting champion, but after uh, the schedule you've been keeping up, I think nobody can deny you're a fighting champion. Thank you, thank you, yeah. Thank you. Steve Fall from Tenka on Wrestling News Co. Tony, Ian, great to see ya. You work with New Japan, but can we see you work more with Tokyo Joshi Pro with, you know, bring up your opponent coming up, Maki Ito as well, someone we all want to see you take on again here, Ring of Honor or Aiden on AEW TV? I mean, one of the really cool things about being in Ring of Honor, um, and I'll just touch a little bit on my past, um, being on the Indies for 10 years, my dream was always to go and wrestle in Japan. 
um, go and prove myself with the best wrestlers, the best Joshi in the entire world. And I never got that opportunity. I still haven't had that opportunity. So every time uh, anyone from Japan comes over here, like I know that they're going to bring the fight. I know that they're going to hit hard. And I'm constantly going to prove that I'm better than them every step of the way. So it doesn't matter if it's Miyu Yamashita. It doesn't matter if it's Yuka Sakazaki. It doesn't matter if it's Maki Ito. Hell, it can even be Aja Kong for all I care. I'm going to beat the brakes off of all of them and show them that I am the absolute best in the world and no one can hold a candle to me. All right. I'm afraid. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Rossap of Fightful, uh, you and Tony have both talked about how some of the matches against the Joshi wrestlers you've been booked against lately are ones that you've won, but weekly on like Dark and ROH you faced some, some really great indie talent like Tootie Lin and Hyann. Are any of those like people that you specifically like went to him and said, I would like to wrestle them because um, there's an awful lot of them. Yes, uh, Hyann in particular. Um, Hyann uh, was trained by Booker T uh, and I was trained by Booker as well. It's something that we had trained together, we've known each other for a very long time and it just kind of matched up when I saw her. I, I think uh, after the Willow match I went to TK, I was like, give me high end tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> like, just Which like, is crazy coming off an amazing match like that to say. It was uh, That again shows what a great fighting champion you are. Yeah, I mean like Ring of Honor meant the world to me when I got the opportunity to work for them on the independent scene. And I know every person that comes through the door feels the exact same way. Just to be able to have some of these stream matches, like Willow was a bucket list match of mine. And like, it was something that I had wanted uh, because I was in WWE and I saw that smile, that everything. And I was like, I just want to punch her in the face. <laughs> please, just please, I just need this so much. So when the match got announced, I was very excited for that. Same thing with High End. I mean, there are a lot of phenomenal wrestlers out there. Once again, they're not me. But at the end of the day, like having the opportunity to prove myself time and time again, having that pressure, having everyone online talk about what is she going to do next? Like what violence can she create next? What is she going to do? Who's going to stop her? You know, that only creates drama and that sucks all of you guys in and makes you want to see me beat them up so much more. I know. You just want to see me win forever. It's fine. <laughs> Thank you. Final questions? Top. Righteous Red, that's the podcast for Wrestling Illustrated magazine. Since the reemergence of Ring of Honor under Tony Khan, many people would say, Athena, that you have been the MVP of what's happened in this match with the Willow was amazing. How has it been to be able to work Ring of Honor with like not as many restrictions as you previously had? It's kind of like there's no commercials. It's just like it, it feels a little bit more free. Um. I, man, that's a hard question because I don't think of it that way. It's, and, and let me put it this way. I've never been a person that's been about myself. I've been about the match. I've been about the story. I've been about the intensity because that's what you guys come to see. You know, people that are for themselves don't last long here. And especially in Ring of Honor, I've seen it time and time again. Someone will come through the door and then they're out, right? This is a reemergence, and I think everyone in my division is proving that we belong here and that we're going to make you watch what we do. There are so many young, amazing talent that are building themselves up. But the one thing about Ring of Honor that you cannot deny is like we are in the proving ground and we will not be denied. We're here to steal every show every week, even when we're at AEW. We are dedicated to showing the world that Ring of Honor is a serious brand and that we are the best brand. Final uh, questions? First off, I think that Leo, I was distracted by wrestling. Congratulations on the next night. Uh, you bring up that you know, you're still proving everything now. The Forbidden Door 2 coming up, is there potentially someone either on the AEW roster or out there elsewhere that you would like to face personally? <laughs> well, I hear Jamie Hayter hits hard. <laughs> <laughs> And I like to hurt people. I mean, she's definitely on my bucket list. There are so many women within the AEW roster that I haven't had the opportunity of wrestling. Um, there are so many women on the independent scene and just out there, New Japan, Stardom, everywhere out in the world uh, that I want to wrestle. Um, 
Masha Slamovich, uh, for one, I won a singles match with uh, Kyrie Sane, uh, Mercedes Monet, I never got that opportunity as well. Yes, I know, I know them, get over it, right? <laughs> but at the end of the day, those are bucket list matches that I want. Um, I would love another round with Tootie Lynn. You know, uh, like I said, there's so many people. Tony Storm, I never got to have a singles match with Tony Storm. Um, Trisha Dora, who's absolutely phenomenal, and I've been keeping my eye on her, hoping that she stays down on the lower card. But, you know, at the, at the end of the day, like, I'm open to any challenge that steps in my way because like, this is what I do, right? The pressure is on, especially when you're champion. You have to prove that you can deliver every single match. And that pressure, sometimes it's anxiety driven, right? But at the end of the day, like, this is what I do. This is what I was made for. And I was born to be champion. I was born to be in Ring of Honor. I was born to be in that ring and no one is gonna take that away from me. Last question for Athena. Hey, you know, Graham Matthews with Bleacher Report. Uh, any thoughts on what the Outcasts have been doing currently in AEW? Do you support the cause? Where do you fall on that line? Or are you just kind of focused on your own business right now? I don't know. Like, I, I look, you know, I, I dabble in the AEW Dynamite and Rampage, if you will. Um, and it's really cool to see all of them find each other, right? But at the end of the day, I don't need anybody. I'm a solo act, right? Now, not to say if they did come a knocking on the door, I would maybe hear them out, hear what they had to say, because after all, I'm more successful than all of them. I have a championship. They don't. But at the end of the day, you know, birds of a feather kind of fly together. But, you know, we have to see what's on the table. What are they offering, right? You know, this beautiful championship does not come cheap, nor does my help, right? So we'll see what happens.